Well, that might have been a little bit unexpected, but hey, a win is a win is a win. So, uh... Damn, that's out of tune. But, uh... So that guitar is out of tune, but I guess the Bruins are in tune because my Bruins fans... It is time to, you know what time it is, fellas. It is time to hug it out. Let's go. Because that is a Bruins win in 2-1 against the Anaheim Ducks at home in, in the shootout. And honestly, this was probably the most evenly matched Bruins game in the day, in the, that they've played so far. Er, I think... Uh, uh, other than maybe the uh, other than maybe the Florida game, I feel like Anaheim. I mean, Anaheim hasn't really done much finish this season yet, but I mean, it's like what, it's like four or five games into the season, so not really much, not really much time to do anything. But still, Anaheim hasn't really done, hasn't really impressed this too much. They won their home opener, and then they dropped the next two, and then they lost this one. But hey, they still won. In, they still lost in overtime, so they. Uh, so not only did they give us kind of a run for our money, but uh, they also got a point out of it. But that's not important. What's important right now is the fact that Matt Grizzlick is back, and holy crap, he actually had he had genuinely one of the best games I think I've ever seen the dude play. I think honestly, this might this might be you know, one of Grizzlick's best games ever. Or, I am so, so happy that he's back. But he's not the only one. He's not the only one making his de season debut uh, uh, this night. We also have Jack Stadnika in the in the lineup for his first start uh, on the third line with Coyle and Frederick. Now, unlike uh, Grizzlick, I also think that Stadnika had a bad game. Like I usually do. I honestly think that the Bruins might uh, either Stadnika is not as good as we hyped him up to be, or we are ruining him. And we need to make and we need to uh, to address either of those just as soon as we can. Just just rip the bandaid off already. Anyway, we uh we start the game. Team the team the uh the the Ducks kind of take two oh, weird penalties. One of uh, one of uh, uh, one of Frank Vit uh, one of former Bruin Frank Vitrana. Damn, a a uh, a revenge game for game for two players. One of uh, one for uh, one for Hampus Lindholm because this is the first game that he's played against the against the Ducks, literally ever. He's he's been with the Ducks ever since they drafted him in 2012. One of the best, uh, uh not as bad of a draft that people think it is, but it's still pretty bad. It, I mean, yeah, it had a ham yeah, it had Nail Yakupov, it had uh, Griffin Reinhardt, it had a bunch of really bad players, but it also had Andre Vasilevsky, Matt Grizzlick, uh, uh Tom Wilson of uh, who is it? Freaking the guy from Nashville. Uh Philip Forsberg. Philip Forsberg, uh Morgan Riley, Hampus Lindholm. It had uh, Matt Dumba. It had a few it had some really good people. Also Co also Connor Hellebuck. Let's not forget about Connor Hellebuck. Anyway, I'm a little, I'm getting a little bit off uh, track. Of uh, but yeah, the Ducks take two uh, penalties. Frank Petrano goes for cross-checking Lindholm, um, and Troy Ter he goes for slashing Nick Foligno. The Bruins kind of sucked on the power play tonight. I don't know if uh, I don't think it's really anything to worry about. I mean, again, it's only game five uh, for the Bruins. I don't think there's really much to worry about right now, you know, other than just. Let's see how uh, let's see how many points we can rack up before uh before Bergeron and uh, and McAvoy get back. Nick. But uh uh Bruins, honestly, this was a fantastic first period. I think uh, we played it so well in their end, and we were fantastic at getting the puck out of, uh, of our own end. And honestly, I know that I've I know that I gave him a lot of shit la uh, last year. For being not that great, Connor Clifton in in these first five games is uh, has been playing like a proper uh, uh, top four defenseman. Now, 
is that going to be consistent throughout the rest of the season? I don't think so. But I'm allowed to be pleasantly surprised. I think we all are, considering last year had a... Last year had... Uh, last year saw... Uh, frick. Last year saw Clifton playing a game against the, against the Leafs in which he was so bad that he was directly responsible for at least three Leafs goals. A good portion of the way through the first period. And no... But uh, no play really sums it up other than the uh, other than the complete genjutsu that the uh, that the Bruins had to, uh, to play through in the first period. Uh, where Clifton just completely robs uh, one of the uh, one of the Ducks forwards uh, and uh, just four checks it up to DeBrusque who's at the top of the uh, of the neutral zone. Oh, and he sh- he gl- he goes a little bit out over, but his back foot is still on the uh is still on the line, so he's not the one that so he doesn't have the uh so he's still technically not in the uh in 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 the uh the ducks territory. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm still I'm also I'm a little drunk after this game. Sorry. But uh he's technically not in ducks territory. So uh, so when uh uh, actually no, he passes to Zaka, whose uh, whose foot is still on the line. Who pa- who then passes to Rebrusk, whose uh, whose foot is like two feet off the line. As uh, when he he gets it, uh, he uh, Rebrusk shoots, uh, it's deflects off. Uh, it ba- uh, and he I gotta say this is really cool. He pa- he bats it into the uh, into the net while uh, while the puck is uh, while the deflection is airborne. And, and while it's cool, still not a goal because you were two feet eh, offsides there. Eh. Eh. But still, Clifton played great. Eh, but at the same time, I don't think that I don't think that Anaheim's offense was playing eh, really well all themselves. Almost. This was definitely this was definitely a, eh, a a battle that was won in the trench. It's like think of who's the who's the best young star that the eh, that the Ducks have. Uh, right. I'll give you five seconds to uh, to name it. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. If you said Trevor Zegris, I just have one question for you. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? Now, if you said uh, if you said the answer is Jamie Drysdale, congratulations, you're correct. You get uh, you get fifty uh, you get fifty Bex bucks. Thanks. Congratulations, you got it. Uh, congratulations, you got it right. Uh, what do Bex Bucks do? I don't know. But anyway, the point is, this was a game that was definitely won in by defense. And, and Jamie Drysdale played out of it, played fantastic. Like, I don't, I don't really think he missed an assignment pretty much all night. Cam Fowler, amazing, uh, amazing. Kevin Shattenkirk uh, put up pretty good uh, pressure as well. Uh, was kind of gooning it up there. As well, he was pretty good. And Bruins, amazing, uh, amazing play by uh, Clifton. Amazing play by Grizzly. Nick, Nick, like the, I don't think, I still don't think that this Hampus Riley uh, duo is at all is really good at all. I don't think that I think that Riley is. Uh, I think that honestly, if you're to ask me, uh, I mean, people are gonna say that. Uh, that uh that Felino is the most overpaid player on the Bruins. They're wrong. It's it's Mike Riley. We're paying that dude three million dollars a year for the next two years to is uh, to be uh, to be like a complimentary piece on our defense at best. Anyway, if I don't move on, uh, this is going to be like forty minutes long. Anyway, we go into the second period. Uh, uh, both teams sort of trade time in, in each other's end, and and they. And a really wonky John Gibson in clear just allows Taylor Hall, uh, like he tries to pass to just nudge it to uh, to his defenseman, and and Taylor Hall is there to. Sorry, Taylor Hall is there to uh, to just spin around and backhand it like, uh, sort of like a uh, sort of like how DeBrusque uh, got his uh, spin around backhand in in the open net uh, on his birthday, uh, but uh. 
Uh, he ca- Not only was this a backhand shot, it was a backhand shot to the short side, and it still somehow went in, which is amazing. I love that. But hey, we're up. Uh, we're up one nothing, and uh, uh, we're up one nothing. It's going great, and then and the Bruins give up a two one and one with Forward in the middle. Well, I like Forward, but I don't. Uh, but he's not gonna win a two on one. He's not the guy that you trust to win that. Uh, to win that, uh, Frank Vitrano uh, takes the uh, Frank Vitrano uh, shoots it from about the. But the face-off circles, it's a 1-1 game. It, re- it remains that way until uh, overtime. Don't worry, you're not really missing anything. Ing. Ing. Uh, f- uh, but I gotta say, the Bruins' penalty kill uh, in this game, fantastic. Forward, uh, forward took a penalty before that uh, before that goal. Oh, that uh, Before that goal, uh, Anaheim scored. Uh, really good. Uh, the... Uh, uh, when Studnika took the, uh, when Jack Studnika took the uh, tripping penalty, uh, the Bru- uh, the Bruins spent so much time in the offensive zone on that penalty kill. Oh, oh, and then when uh, uh, uh what is it? it? It's just frustrating that uh, uh that uh, our power play wasn't that great. I mean, and we then had Kevin Shattenkirk taking a, a hooking penalty, and we. You can't do anything with it. Nathan and Beaulieu flipping the puck over the uh, over the glass uh, for a delay of game penalty. We can't uh, we can't communicate it as well. And it's the second time all night. It's the second time out of four uh, that we take a power play and we uh, that we get a power play and we get no shots on goal after it. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Of uh, let's talk about uh, that rush the fourth line had. It, with one of the with one of the best saves I've seen in from in in this year, er, where uh, uh where Felino oh, and Nosek have like a three on, uh, where the entire fourth line has like a three on two, oh uh, and uh, and Nosek has it he he just needs to chip it up and he can't so, and that pretty, uh, that happens. Bruins take the Kevin Shattenkirk. Uh, penalty. They can't really do anything with it. Uh, that ends the second period. Then the third period starts with Nathan Beaulieu uh, getting the delay of game penalty. Can't really do anything with it. it, it but uh, Jack Stadnika again goes for slashing in the sec- in the third period. It, and again, holy crap, our penalty kill. Amazing. We, uh, It's just, it's honestly surprising to me that we haven't scored a shorthanded goal all this season because they've been amazing. Thing. Anyway, Taylor Hall eventually lands a lands a massive hit on it against the board nerds, nerds on t- on Cam Fowler just as he's is clearing the puck from behind the net. It, it, Cam Fowler just at the last second puts his head up, uh, uh just enough for just enough time that Taylor Hall uh, uh, can collide into him. Fowler hits the hits the ground like a sack of potatoes. Uh, it takes him a little bit of uh, time to get up. Uh, play is on the other side of the ice, so no one's really, uh, so the cameras aren't really on him, and he just labors himself off the, uh, off the ice. He's, I hope that Cam Fowler is not hurt. It is not seriously hurt. But uh, 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 and then we get a really funny penalty because it just happens in the last uh, thirty-two seconds of the uh, of regulation. Uh, uh, I want you to. I want you guys to is to tell me, was uh, was Hampus Lindholm um, roughing Frank Vitrano and put him in a headlock, or did Frank Vitrano grab uh, Lindholm's um, arm and try to uh, and try to uh, fling him down onto the uh, ice over him? Because honestly, I feel like that could go either way. I feel like that could go either way. Uh, either way, that's uh, it's freaking hilarious how that happened though. Anyway, the refs really only see the uh the Lindholm part, so Lindholm gets the it's the penalty, and they meaning the uh meaning Anaheim has it has like one minute has like a minute and twenty eight left uh, left on the penalty uh, for a four on three at the start of the uh, at the start of overtime. Bruins end up killing the penalty, uh, and Anaheim forgets that uh, that it needs to be. 
three people, three people on the ice after the penalty dies. But because there was no stoppage of play, I guess I'm I'm not really sure how this works. But because there was no stoppage of play, Anaheim was allowed to have four players on the ice. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not only am I a little bit too incapacitated for that, but that just doesn't sound that just doesn't sound right. Uh, but doesn't matter. The Bruins are still controlling this game. They're doing a great. What the hell is that pass? Uh, what the hell is that stick handling? In Grizz, like what the hell? No, this is the one bad play you've had all game, and now Troy Terry is going to. Uh, and now Troy Terry is going to uh, to put the game away for the uh, Anaheim. Gadgetsa. Just when you need him to turn into a brick wall, Linus Olmark not only turns into a brick wall, the dude turns into uh, the uh, the equivalent, uh, the NHL equivalent of Area 51. Cl- in- in secure lockdown, nothing's getting past me, and I am in, sending every everything that tries to get behind me back into the wilderness. This, cause, uh, cause he blocks the Troy Terry uh, shot and just mucks it up in the corner uh, until he can clear the puck himself. God, I love that. Anyway, uh, Derek Grant takes a. It takes a tripping penalty with 23 and a half seconds left. Great. I wonder what we're going to do with 23 and a half seconds. Oh my God. Pasta, you have a perfect shot. Just take the shot. Just take the shot. He didn't take the shot. So we head to the shootout. I honestly didn't expect this to be the you know, the way the game ended. It, and uh, uh, it was uh, none of the first three skaters on either uh, Side got uh, got it passed. Uh, Stabrusk, uh, Pasta, and Coyle all fuck uh, all uh, screw the pooch for the Bruins. Zegr- uh, Trevor Zegris, Troy Terry, and Kevin Shattenkirk all all screw the pooch for uh, for Anaheim. And then in Taylor Hall, who scored the uh, the Bruins' only goal that night, uh, does it again in uh, just shooting directly into uh, into John Gibson, and it somehow leaks past uh, through the five hole to. Uh, to give the Bruins one in the shootout. Uh, now Max Comtois needs to uh, needs to do something. He tries to sneak it around on uh, Allmark. It does not work. The Bruins go home with the win. I I say go home with the win when I say that they were home. Uh, when they were home. It doesn't matter. The Bruins won this game. Honestly, uh, honestly going to overtime was uh, sort of an inevitability. And if we're going to... Uh, and if we're gonna go to overtime, I'd rather it be f- from a team that gives us a run for our money than a team that uh, than a team that we just kind of fuck up on a few times. To- um, um, although to be fair, it felt like Anaheim was really just giving us a run for our money uh, because we decided to break down at the worst possible times. Um, so realistically, it was the it was the latter of the two things where they really just. Uh, we really just fucked up at the worst times. So, what does this mean for the bro? Uh, what does this mean in after this game? It means that the Bruins are now four one and zero. I. It is always good uh, when your team starts out that ain't good, especially when you're missing uh, when you're missing one of your best forwards, your best defenseman, and a key part of your top four. Here, here's my, here's the thing that's going around in my head is who's going to be, off, who's going to be out of the roster when, uh, when Carlo and McAvoy get back, because when McAvoy gets back, I could see Zaboro maybe, I could see Jacob Zaboro maybe going, uh, maybe heading out of the, uh, the starting lineup. I love Zaboro. I, I freaking love Zaboro. I don't think that he's played a, as amazing as he showed in the in the uh in the preseason, he's played great. He has played great. I don't think he's played as good as he needs to be. Will he see another shot in the? Will he see another shot later on this season? Absolutely, he's going to see another shot. Now, when McAvoy gets back, I think that might be the 
eh, the death knell on a uh, on Clifton's time in the starting lineup for uh, for the time being. I uh, actually no, actually, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think eh, that top pair is gonna be eh, is gonna be eh, McAvoy eh, McAvoy Lindholm, uh, eh, Grizzly Carlo, uh, Forbort Riley. I think that's going to be our, our main pairs. I think that the forward Clifton pairing, by the way, is our best defensive pairing right now. Absolutely our best defensive pairing. Ing. The two of them play so well together, and I think that eh, and I think that they could eh, really solidify a bottom eh, a bottom pair for us. But that's not my decision to make. That's Jim Montgomery's. But that is it for tonight's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Click like if you like. Click subscribe if you really like. Down below is my eh, is my TikTok and my Twitch.tv at uh, Twitch.tv uh, forward slash uh, 100 underscore Bex. Check me out there and have a good night, everybody. Uh, thank you all so much for listening.